Hi, in this video I am discussing the Kano model, a model which helps us in visualizing customer satisfaction against the presence or absence of a feature in a product. This model talks about two dimensions. The one dimension which is represented in the vertical axis represent customer satisfaction. At the top end, we have a very satisfied, happy customer, very happy customer. At the bottom end, we have dissatisfied or a sad customer. Uh, the another dimension in this model represents the presence or absence of a feature. Now, if the features are absent, they will fall in, in this segment. If they are fully implemented, they will fall uh, uh, here. Now, there are types of features. As much you implement them, the customer satisfaction will increase. These type of features are called linear features. So, in, in this category, as much you build up, customer satisfaction will start increasing. Let's take an example of a hotel. The size of hotel room is a linear feature. If you have a very small room, the customer would be dissatisfied. If you have a sufficient room, customer would be neutral. And as you increase the size of a room, customer would be more satisfied. So these type of features are called linear. Sometimes they're also called performance features. Now, uh, in case of a, a website, so, so the response time is a linear feature. If website takes 60 seconds to load, it would the customer would be very uh, dissatisfied. If it takes 30 seconds, he would be neutral. If it takes 5 seconds, the customer would be happy. So the type of features where customer satisfaction is linearly proportionate or, or linearly related to the implementation of it falls under this category. Now the good part of with these features are Usually, the end customers are quite aware about them. When you ask what you need from this particular system, they can talk a lot about all linear category because these are the features which are always in their mind. Then we have a second type of features. These type of features are called must-have or threshold features. The absence of these features makes customer very dissatisfied, but the presence or a fully implementation of these features still keeps customer neutral. He, the customer is not happy. It, it is not going in a second segment, even if we fully implement those features. They are threshold, or we can say must have. Let's take again the hotel room. You never ask when you book a hotel, will the room would be clean? You always take it as a granted. You expect the hotel should be clean and when managed. If it is clean, you don't feel good about it. It is usual if it is not clean you will feel very dissatisfied about it for a, a web portal for example if you are going to a job site if you have a search feature available in that particular job site job portal you don't feel great about it because it's a job portal if it doesn't have a search feature it doesn't make sense but if it is absent you will feel very bad about that particular website you may not visit it again so they these type of features are threshold feature as a business analyst this is a very challenging and uh, type of uh, set because customer may not think about them customer may not even talk about them because they take them as a granted but you need to know them well especially when you are getting into a new domain where you don't understand that that area well, you need to investigate which all comes under threshold category. Because if you don't implement them, then customer would just will not visit our website again. Then there is a third category, which are wow features. These features are falling somewhere here. So uh, rather than this curve, it is something like this. So as we implement them, customer will feel wow about them. They are exciters. So they excite the customers. They are like unique selling propositions, differentiators. Customer is not expecting them. So if they are present, customer is not feeling bad. This, this point represents customer is neutral about them. So if it is not implemented, customer is okay. If even part of it is implemented, customer will start feel uh, uh, good. If you implement some more, customer will be excited about them. So again, go back to the hotel room. Maybe a free Wi-Fi works as an exciter for a particular uh, uh, hotel or a business travelers because they don't expect from that category of hotel to provide a free Wi-Fi <clears throat> for a, a website. Maybe a, a 
Google login. So if, if you are a job portal, if you are uh, uh, signing up to a job portal, the, the portal who provides a facility to import a profile from LinkedIn, uh, synchronize your profile from LinkedIn, you may find that exciting because you don't have to maintain your profile at two places, but you could not think about that particular feature when you were signing up or when you were visiting that particular job portal. So it falls under exciter category. As a, as a business analyst, this is again a challenging environment because customer may not know what will excite them, but what all possibilities are there in that particular area which will fall under this category. The another thing we should remember as a business analyst is these categories are not static. The feature, the Wi-Fi, which looks excited today, maybe after six months it becomes threshold because everybody provides Wi-Fi. So with passes of time, these categories keep changing. And if you are doing a business analysis in a product, you should also keep in mind the product development itself will take nine to say, uh, say some time. And during that time, these preferences can move. Now, in order to reach to these categories, as a business analyst, you may need to conduct stakeholder interviews. You may need to design a survey form which talks about how good you will feel if this particular feature is present in an application or how dissatisfied you would be if this particular uh, feature is absent from your, uh, uh, your target applications. Using such kind of questionnaires, you may come up with a score which helps you to categorize features in these three categories. It may happen that different different stakeholders are putting different different preferences. So you need to drive your own uh, formula, your own method of, of calculating uh, and categorizing your set of features under these three uh, categories. So Kano model can be used for prioritizing requirement, can be used when you are doing a brainstorming with, with your stakeholders in order to uh, identify the scope of the first release because when we try to deliver something, we target that at least threshold should be delivered. So our first release cannot go live till the time we don't have a threshold. Uh, we should try to include as many linear uh, features we can and we should put some of the exciter so it brings some spice in our delivery. So in various circumstances, you can do this visualization or a Kano model technique in order to have a fruitful discussions with the stakeholder. Thank you.